I'm John Seligman from the Israel Antiquities Authority from Jerusalem. I'm here to do an excavation and an investigation and a research of the Great Synagogue of, uh, of Vilna, where we're standing right now. In fact, we're standing on what was the Great Synagogue of Vilna, but it's no longer here. And we will be doing research into whatever was here in the past. Why do you care? I think uh, this is a very central part of Jewish heritage of, the, of this land. Uh, my family is from this area and uh, when I saw that they were doing some work in this area and the possibility of conducting research on this really what is the most important synagogue of, uh, of the whole of Lithuania, uh, that, that really excited me and it gave me an opportunity to be involved myself professionally in something which has real personal meaning to me as well. So what's so important about it? Uh, this synagogue was the uh, was the very centre of what we call Litvak Jewry. Uh, Litvak Jewry was the, the was the Jewish community that existed. What is now Lithuania, much of Belarus, areas of Latvia, and down into the Ukraine. And this uh, this this part of Eastern Europe was the centre of a particular branch of uh, of, Jude of Judaism, which uh, you could say was against the Hasidic kind of trend which happened in the southern part of Europe, uh, southern part of uh, Poland and also into Hungary. And this very much represented the kind of Jews who lived in this area and the way that they actually prayed. So the building over here, which was a, the major monument of, Lit of Lithuanian Jewry uh, and is now lost, is something that's very important to understand for anybody who wants to understand how this city, Vilna, uh, which at that time had 35% of 35% uh, Jewish population, uh, existed and, uh, and, uh, and lived during and right up to the period that right up to the period of the Holocaust when of course the community here was completely lost. Well where is your family from? My family was from the uh, region around here from various villages we call Shtetls uh, or Shtetlach um, here around this particular region um, towns of Kratinga, Shaduva, Braslav and Kraslava they're close by those this this was the big city where people used to come from those particular villages. Well, would any of your family have been here to where the Great Synagogue is? Or do you uh, know? Yeah, sure. People, we, people would have come to when they came to Vilna. They would have been in the Great Synagogue. They, uh, certainly it was a place that was the central part of, of Jewish life, in not only in Vilna itself, but also in the entire region. And uh, there's no question that when they visited the city, well, they would have come to this particular place, which not included not only the synagogue, it included many of the other essential parts of the Jewish community, the place where you would buy kosher meat, the wow. major library of the city, uh, the mikveh, uh, and of course the many, many small prayer halls which surrounded the synagogue itself. So why should I care about it now? It's all over. That's why do we care about heritage altogether? We care about heritage because it defines who we are, it defines our identity, it defines how we, uh, how we see ourselves in the past and how we see ourselves also into the future. And without giving ourselves some sort of identity and meaning, uh, we come no more than just uh, just human li beings living in a space. We want to actually have a connection to place and a connection to our past and a connection also into our future. What do you? What else do you do? What do you? What do you do in Israel? Uh, I uh, am in charge of the uh, excavations and survey department, the research department of the Antiquities Authority. Firstly, my research interests are usually into Christian archaeology, paradoxically, and so uh, over here we have an opportunity to do something which is slightly different from my general day-to-day. Uh, research, uh, research activities and um, this is a very exciting opportunity to do something somewhere else and something that's slightly different. I'm Dr. John Seligman of the Israel Antiquities Authority from Jerusalem. I'm Dr. Richard Freund from the University of Hartford. We're now standing in front of uh, the what was the Great Synagogue of Vilna from the 15th century all the way through to the 20th century during the time of the destruction of the Vilna community by the Nazis. Uh, this building, which was once the center of Litvak Jewry, uh, has enclosed within it a whole complex of buildings, community organizations, which formed the very center of the Jews of this city and, of course, of the whole region. The Great Synagogue of Vilna was a building that was built during the 15th century and gradually increased in size as various prayer halls, what we call cloison, were added around the building. Beyond that, there were all the communal organizations like the Mikveh, meat stalls, the famous Strashun Library, and other, other community organizations, which were very much part of the work uh, at that time. And we are going to find some of those uh, buildings during the work we will be conducting over the next few years. Ground penetrating radar can look through the, the, the present level of the, the surface of the street, down through the, the, the layers, go, go down as five meters in order to 
reconstruct what the entire building looked like, even though the building is no longer standing. Though this building is now lost, um, much of the information of the original structure will be uh, found underground. The, for example, the floor of this synagogue was one and a half meters to two meters below the present ground level. So during the excavation, we have every possibility of finding not only the, uh, the part of the, uh, of the, of the, of the Ark, the Aron Kodesh, but also the Bima, and hopefully also parts of the Mikvot, of the ritual baths, which were in the back of the structure. So these are very important questions, which we hope that archeology span and its associated sciences can give us information about. Ground penetrating radar that we're doing with the team from the University of Wisconsin, Eau Claire, together with Duquesne University, we're creating a map of the entire subsurface which can go down to five meters below the present street level. The good news is it's non-invasive and does nothing to affect the, the school that's behind us. But we can take those results, give them to archaeologists, and they can do pinpoint archaeology to excavate those sites where there are either artifacts, architecture, or something that could be uh, unearthed without having to do great damage to the site. We're now standing in the back of the synagogue complex where the modern school now stands upon the synagogue building. And over here we're doing ground penetrating radar with Dr. Harry Joel of the University of Wisconsin. So what we're using is to have FM radio waves to look into the ground. These will reflect off layers in the subsurface and through the uh, receiver and transmitter, uh, which are triggered by the wheel here. The wheel is sampling every five centimeters so we can have high resolution. And what we'll be doing now is we'll be collecting some data. So what we see here is that as we're collecting, we are putting signals into the ground, they're coming back up, and what we can see on the computer screen right now is multiple horizons. And in this place here, we're seeing about eight layers into the ground, probably about 2.5 meters into the subsurface. And as we collect multiple lines, we can do it into a, a 3D grid and be able to build um, and look for walls and floors in this area.